Hey guys, Layla here and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Milo markers. So a lot of you guys have been requesting this that I take a look at them, so I am. It's still packaged a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and open them up. And this is just the 24 set that I bought off amazon.com. And it's a nice pretty white box. The top seems to slide right off. And then I have a bunch of these beautiful colors. I'm a little nervous about my color selection, but I went with the 24 set because it was $24, maybe 25, let me, but yeah, it was $24.90 actually to be exact. So pretty much $25. But the weird thing is, is for the 48 count, they are a bit cheaper. The 48 costs $44.90. So, oh, the cap stack, that's cool. So let's look at the marker itself. We've got a brush nib, which is a standard brush nib. The barrel is triangular, which I kind of like. I always feel like triangular barrels are easier to handle. And then on the other side is our standard chisel nib. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do my color swatches. A little hard to get off the caps, just a bit. Not as hard as Prismacolor though. <laughs> oh, oh my. Okay, so right off the bat, these are some firm brush nibs. Like, there's really no bendability to them. That's surprising. Huh, not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> it's marigold. The color cap looks, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, that was a really hard cap to open. <laughs> okay, um, this <laughs> marigold looks kind of peachy rather than orangey, but when I color with it, it is definitely orangey. So I would say the color is definitely on point, but the color cap, I don't know, just looks like a peachy color. This color selection has me so nervous. Oh, it's sort of like, if it's not super vivid and bright, it's super dark and bold. And I, I got some feelings about that. And I know you're probably wondering, well, Layla, why didn't you get the bigger count pack. And that's just because I wanted to save some money. <sighs> but congratulations, Layla. You played yourself. <laughs> One thing I do like is these little pop-up bubbles things <laughs> that are on the caps. Can you see them? Kind of, yeah. And the caps are a little hard to get off, but the little bubble things definitely create like that gripping sensation. So that makes it easier to get the caps off. So I do like that. All right, and that completes the color swatching with all my color numbers. All right, so let's move on and see about blending. Okay, so here's my little blending card. I'm just gonna test some samples. All right, it blends standardly well. It, it, like I said, I kind of expected that because it runs on the same sort of ink system as Shinhan, and I've blended with that ink before. I'm gonna go ahead and try out a different color. I feel like I'd get a better feathering motion if the nibs were more flexible. I don't know. All right, that's my second blend with some reds. And then let me just show you guys ink flow really quick. I'm gonna go up, down, up, down. And I'm putting a lot of pressure going down in order to sort of get this nib to flex. And it, and it, and it kind of is, but it's kind of resisting me a lot. So, but the ink flow is nice. All right, let's go ahead and try coloring something in. So I drew this cute character up. She's kind of a chibi in a sense. I say kind of because I'm not really good at chibi kind of styles, but I like my style of chibi, to be honest. <laughs> it's just when I imagine chibi, I imagine huge, huge heads and like itty bitty bodies, but mine is like just huge head and slightly smaller body, but yeah. <laughs> and so I have a pretty strong color selection in greens. So I'm gonna do her skin green. Okay, so I'm doing a lot of just blending with this green gray color. I tried introducing the color 53 for some more saturated color that is in shadow, but I didn't really like the results. It looked a little too strong. So I'm basically just blending out the bejesus out of this green gray so that it doesn't look too harsh, but it's the only color that really seems to complement the green tone and give it a nice natural shaded look. All right, so skin is done. And I'm gonna move on to the hair. The only other colors that I have a good range on are the reds. 
So I'm probably gonna do her hair in red. Oh, you know who she's kind of looking like? She's giving me some really strong Poison Ivy vibes. I love Poison Ivy. She's one of my favorite DC characters. And so these markers are not refillable, but I'm sure like you probably already guessed that. <laughs> Most of the cheaper end markers aren't refillable because they're cheap and you can just rebuy the pack in a sense. But I understand that that can be kind of inconvenient for a lot of people. So I definitely understand that it's just so much more convenient to refill them. And since these run on the same color system as Shinhan Touch Twin markers, you can refill them with the Shinhan marker ink. And so I just finished coloring the base color for her hair with this vermilion red number 14. And I hate to say it, but my brush nib is starting to fray. And the fraying brush nib is definitely not a paper issue. And just what I mean by that is usually when it comes to brush nib markers, the texture, you have to be careful with the texture of the paper that you're using. So for instance, if you're using watercolored paper, your nib will most likely fray a lot faster. And I know some alcohol artists use watercolor paper because apparently it blends really, really well with markers. I personally, this is a personal opinion, you guys can do whatever you feel is best for you. I personally wouldn't do that. One, because of the possibility of nib fraying, but also because watercolor paper is going to drink your markers dry super fast. And you don't want that, or at least you shouldn't want that. <laughs> if, you, if you're looking to save money, you shouldn't want that. And so basically you're just looking for paper that should be compatible with your markers. For instance, the paper that I'm using here is the Express It Blending card in size eight and a half by 11. And basically it really helps with the ink of the marker to just kind of sit on top of the paper, not really drink it dry. And it really helps with blending your colors because since it's not drinking the ink up into the paper, you kind of are given time to work with the ink still wet, which promotes better blends. And you know, a part of me wonders if it's fraying because of how inflexible the nib is. Like since the nib is just a little bit more stiff than what I'm used to, I wonder if that is what is causing the fibers to kind of separate at the tip. And I'm not using hard pressure. I'm using normal pressure that I would put on any marker. You know, that includes my Copics, Ahuhus, Arctics. So I mean, I just am, I'm just really surprised that the fraying is happening. And I'm not too crazy about this color selection that I've got going on here. And I'm sure I would have been more satisfied if I got the 48 count. But at the same time, I feel I also would have been upset had I gotten the 48 count and seen the quality of the nibs after, you know, using them once. Mm. And there's also no colorless blender, which I didn't notice at first because honestly, I don't use that colorless blender marker ever, but it's pretty common in other marker sets. But the fact that it's missing, I don't think is a big deal. All right, and shinies. So I'm breaking out my Sakura Jelly Roll gel pen in white, and I'm just adding on white highlights. And I love adding designs in white with my gel pen because I feel like it gives the eyes, I don't know, like a break. Like it doesn't, this blue doesn't seem so intense because of the white lines that I made. At least that's the feeling I get. Cause I'm not a huge fan of how dark this cobalt blue is, I think it is. And I'm just gonna add a quick, probably single color kind of background. And this is just basically the lightest color in the pack. This pastel peach, it's called, number 26. And I'm going with the lightest color for the background because she's already so bold and bright in her color scheme that doing a color any darker than this would really not go well. Like the background and the character would be fighting for your attention, which I don't think is a good idea. And so I still struggle with getting an even tone in the background. I've been basically just doing all different kinds of techniques that you all have been leaving in the comments 
I've done small circles, big circles, straight lines going one way very slowly, straight lines going one way very quickly, and I just haven't really found one that really works. This one that I'm doing is just someone mentioned in the comments what they do is they go in every single direction and just go over it again and again and again. I definitely feel like it's a huge waste of ink, but so far it's not too bad. I feel like I end up with a lot more splotchiness any other way. <laughs> Although I am getting some crazy splotches, like patchiness and stuff. So I was doing some small circling to sort of get an even fill in certain areas, but I definitely feel this is a better representation of what I'm talking about when, I'm, when I mention the nib fraying. That is some fraying. And circling isn't always the best method for using brush nibs. At the same time, it should not be damaging the nib in this way. I mean, that's excessive and surprising because I always do a circling motion with all my alcohol markers and never have I experienced fraying like that. So I'm just gonna outline her really quick to cover up any areas that I may have gone outside of the lines. And that's that. So final thoughts. Um. I'm a little dissatisfied, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like the color selection could have been better for the 24 count, but at the same time, maybe I should have bought the 48 count if I wanted more colors. So there's that too. The fraying of the nib, I'm maybe being too harsh, but I feel like that's kind of mm, inexcusable. <laughs> and I say that only because there are other brands out there that are even slightly cheaper that the brush nibs don't fray like that, especially on the first use. So those are some of the things that I was let down on. I really thought that this would just be another affordable brand to try out that I would in the end be like, you know, yeah, this is great for beginners or, you know, or even for any kind of artist, but I just, I can't say that without feeling like a liar. So those are my final thoughts. At the same time, I really like the character I created. And if you enjoyed this video, maybe comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.